Hello everyone, this is Paul W1VLF. This is a project that I worked on a couple of years ago. It's a ruggedized version of a two meter ground plane uh, designed to mount very quickly on top of a one and a quarter inch standard television mast. We've all seen the PL259 or actually SO234 ground plane that can be made from a couple of pieces of uh, copper wire uh, and a chassis connector. This antenna was designed to be portable, uh, rugged, and uh, well, you guys take a look at it. Tell me what you think. Here's a couple possible uses for the antenna. Some objectives that I set for myself when building this antenna it were it had to be very rugged so if you tipped it over or it fell off the table or something happened it wouldn't break apart um, easy and quick to assemble uh, a minimal amount of tools for con um, assembling the antenna uh, for a non-permanent or temporary deployment you don't need any tools but if you're going to mount it somewhere permanently a 7 16 wrench and a small allen key wanted it to be waterproof and also have a very small footprint when disassembled. You'll see that in one of the pictures as we move forward. Here's the antenna mounted in my backyard on an inch and a quarter aluminum mast. You can see that the uh, radials slope down at about a 160 degree angle and that was uh, empirically arrived upon by many many uh, prototypes until this finished product came along. This is not going to be a actual build or how to build this antenna because it starts off with uh, um, a two and an eighth inch diameter slug of aluminum and it needs to be machined using a lathe, a milling machine, and a rotary tilting rotary table. Uh, more, more that this uh, this uh, video is just to show you uh, what could be accomplished and maybe give somebody an idea of of how they want to build something on their own. Here's the central hub or slug of the antenna, um, a two and an eighth inch piece of aluminum, uh, cut, faced off, drilled, bored, and finally the UHF barrel inserted. We'll take a closer look at each one of these pieces later in the video. The raw slug of two and an eighth inch aluminum for the main body of the antenna. The same slug after it's been machined flat and prepared for the next set of operations. The hub has now been uh, drilled. Um, the set screws for permanent insulation have been drilled and tapped and installed and there's also one set screw off to the side on the left hand side of the the picture that uh, will hold that um, UHF barrel in place. Um, you're going to see that the uh, set screws that hold the slug onto the mast are not stainless, but in the final version they would be. This, this photo shows the long UHF barrel in place. Uh, the hole in the center is such that it's a, almost a press fit. Um, there is uh, epoxy applied to the threads in the middle so that it can press fit in and, and make a watertight seal and you can also see on the side the hole for the set screw to firmly um, make a, you know, a very positive contact to that UHF barrel. A better view of the long UHF barrel, the nuts that hold it in the center of the hub and here you can see the uh, threaded elements, the quarter inch 6061 T6 uh, aluminum elements, the holes that each one will thread into. Uh, very, very strong uh, setup. The underside of the hub showing the UHF barrel and the six uh, quarter 20 tapped holes uh, angled at 120 degrees for the elements the aluminum elements to connect to. I tried as many as 10 elements and it didn't seem to change the uh, SWR on the antenna. Uh, six ended up being a, uh, an, a good number and uh, worked out well. 
Here's an example of the aluminum threaded with the stainless steel locking washer. These elements are simply hand twisted into the hub and fit in there pretty snugly. If you were going to use this in a permanent installation, you'd of course torque those quarter 20 uh, 7 16 nuts down permanently. Here's a view of the PL259 and the aluminum center uh, radiator. Um, you could put a little bit of um, you know, compound on the threads or tape it up permanently to make it completely waterproof, but it unscrews. It has a Delrin insulator in the very center of it, which I don't have any very real good close-ups of, but uh, that was also machined on the lathe. A close-up of the hub with the radiator attached, the elements screwed in and mounted on a piece of inch and a quarter aluminum pipe. Here is a photo of the antenna as you would use it indoors. Um, the coax cable would go up through the pipe and screw on to the inside of the hub and you could just leave it mounted right there on your desk uh, or wherever. Uh, worked out very well like that. It's quite stable. All the elements are very equal in length, so it doesn't tilt or anything. Uh, if you're going to use it inside and it's below your eye level, I would uh, be very, very careful about that so you don't poke something out.